Hi y'all, welcome back to Kim's Country Life. So this was my first year with a garden of my own. My mom helped me plant, actually, my mom forced me to plant a garden, which was kind of funny because I had no desire to plant a garden whatsoever. And then I got into it and I basically took over the garden. She couldn't believe it. So now, um, I'm a little addicted to gardening, just a little bit. So, um, I'm planning a much larger garden for next year, which is going to be a lot more work, but I didn't mind it. Um, I really didn't mind the work at all. It wasn't what I would consider difficult. Um, next year, the particular bed we planted will probably be worse with the weeds, but it really... I mean, for what we got out of the garden, it was totally 100% worth it. So I might have gone a little crazy with seeds for next year's garden. I have a whole stash that you guys aren't going to see today, but I'll get those out later. Um, but I do have my five seed orders. Fortunately, they decided to pack a couple of them in the same one, which uh, saved me some shipping. Uh, but you'll notice these are not from your big box stores, not from Walmart, Home Depot, um, Tractor Supply, anywhere like that. These are from actual rare seed companies. That's what they do. Um, I've learned about a couple of them. I've started doing seed catalogs, which is going to be um, something else. My husband's going to kill me by the time we're all said and done. But let's go through and see what kind of seeds I bought. Oh, I will say one more thing. People tell you to only grow in your garden what you'll eat. And I agree with that 99% of the time. But the thing is, you have to think about the sauces that you eat, the salsas, the salads, things that you wouldn't necessarily eat the ingredients individually but when they're combined, they give a completely different taste profile. And I'll explain why that's important to me in just here in a second. So first we're going to start with my Annie's Heirloom Seed Order. They sent me a beautiful catalog. And the packaging's cute. Very simple. And it tells you right on the front you know, growing time, uh, spacing. It gives you all the information that you need. So this one is an old German tomato. It's a beefsteak tomato, which means it's a slicer. I love tomato and cheese sandwiches. Um, so this is perfect. It's a huge yellow tomato. Um, I don't know if it says on here. I read somewhere that... Up, oh, yep, produces up to one pound tomatoes. Uh, and then I've got the San Marzano tomato. Um, this is a really good sauce tomato, and I like to make my own spaghetti sauce. Um, and I'm venturing into canning this year. As a matter of fact, while I'm shooting this video, I have um, tomatoes that are stewing, not stewing, they're cooking down so I can finish off my sauce. Uh, these are what are called a paste tomato. They're a little, they have a little less liquid inside and a little bit more meat. So they make a good sauce. Uh, let's see. These are the Black Prince tomatoes. I bought those because who doesn't want to try and grow black tomatoes? You know, I like unusual things. And it says here that they originated in Siberia. So... I am, uh, I'm pretty excited about that. Um, and here is where we start talking about why you plant things that you wouldn't necessarily eat by themselves. Um, I don't like peppers. I don't like bell peppers. I don't like chili peppers. I don't like spicy peppers. I don't like sweet peppers. I don't like pickled peppers. I don't like peppers. But when you put peppers in a salsa, I love it. When you cook with peppers and you get a little bit of that peppery flavor in your food, I love it. But I won't eat a raw pepper and I won't eat a cooked pepper by itself. 
Um, it's got to be diced up in a salsa. And I've got these purple beauty bell peppers. They're going to have a purplish hue to them when they are grown. And I'm super excited uh, to make some um, salsa with these. Uh, this one is a chocolate bell pepper, and it's good for my region. I'm in 6A, so I guess technically I'm considered a northern grower. Um, I'm in Ohio, which is, uh, I believe, where 6A, 6B, and 7A may be in the southern parts. Um, there's growing zones and we'll talk about them in another video as well. So those were my five seed packets that I ordered from Annie's and these all have at least 25 seeds in them. Um, a couple of these are actually certified organic. They have the green frames on them. Uh, and I'm doing my best to grow organically. I don't want to use any chemicals or pesticides if I don't have to. Um, so that's Annie's. And it was really sweet because I placed two separate orders. And they combined them together. And I got a handwritten thank you on my receipt. I thought that was really, really nice. Um, nice personal touch. So this is my first packet and these are from Baker Hughes and I'm going to link to these websites down in the description below so you could kind of kind of shop through um and <laughs> I might have went a little overboard again I'm going to have a lot of melons next year so this is a honeydew melon um most of you have seen a honeydew in uh the grocery store these are heirloom seeds. All of these from Baker Creek are heirloom seeds. And we'll talk about what heirloom means, but basically it means it's been around and it hasn't been genetically tampered with. Um, and you're pretty much guaranteed to get the same fruit from every single one of those seeds. Of course, weather factors in and your gardening techniques and all that stuff, but yeah. And then, because I had such fun with pickles this year, here's a Parisian peck, pickling cucumber. Uh, it's called a French gherkin or a cornichon pickler. And it great, it's great for making tiny sweet pickles. And I love my bread and butter pickles, so I'm hoping that these will fit the bill for that. Alright, now this is a melon I had never heard of, which is not surprising because there's millions and millions of plants out there, I swear. This is a mango melon, also called a vine peach. Um, I don't know too much about it. Um, and I'm going to have to Google it and I will let you guys know what goes on with that. And then Baker Creek gave me some free seeds because of my order. And now I have something that I literally won't eat. But I'm going to grow them anyways because I'm going to try kale. It's supposed to be so good for you. And I haven't found a kale that I like. And both packages are Russian Red or Ragged Jack kale. Uh, they grow fast. They're good for salad greens. Um, maybe I'll try them as uh, baby greens. And they have a red tinge. And it says that these are pre- 1885 heirlooms. So this has been around for a really long time. Uh, this, I have to thank Roots and Refuge Farm for this. I adore Jess and Maya and their boys and uh, Michaela. They're such a great channel to watch. They're such a wonderful family. But she grew something called a cucamelon. And I thought, oh my gosh. They're little, teeny, tiny, like, cucumbers that look like watermelons. They're called Mexican Sour Gherkins or Cucamelons. Um, and I can't wait to grow them. I don't even care what they taste like. I mean, I do. I hope they're really, really good and I can make pickles with them. You know, like the little gherkins that you put on on the 
sh oh, shark, shark, yeah, the trays with the pickles and the meat and the cheese and the fruit and the crackers and everything. I can never pronounce it, but yeah, I mean, these are adorable, teeny tiny cucumbers that look like watermelons. I can't wait. Uh, and the first cherry tomato I have here is a blue cream berry tomato. I mean, aren't they gorgeous? I can't wait to taste them. Um, I'm so excited. And then this one is another one that uh, Roots and Refuge turned me on to. Uh, I'll link them down below. I love watching their videos. I actually went back and started in the beginning and working my way through. But Brad's Atomic Grape, I mean, her kids absolutely love them. She said they're, they're probably one of the best cherries that she grows. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. And then I've got a melon. It's a sweet passion melon. And it's interesting because this is actually an Ohio heirloom from the 20s. So I'm very excited. Three to four pound fruits. I cannot wait to try these. I love melons. Except, ironically, I don't like watermelon. It's a texture thing. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to grow it. Because I am. Uh, so that was my first Baker Creek order. And then here's my other one. Let's see what we got here. Alright. Oh. Another package of kale. Oh boy. Uh, Alright. So another thing that I don't like. And I got these for my mom because I don't like them. Are beets. They're so good for you. The greens are good for you. The roots are good for you. But they taste like dirt. And I actually learned from Jess why they taste like dirt the other night watching one of her videos. Um, so, yeah, this is a canning beet. It looks great. Very red. I'm sure my mom will be excited. Uh, I've got another pickling cucumber, a Boston pickling cucumber. This one's been around since 1880. Uh, I can't wait. Let's see what else we got here. I don't eat onions either, unless they're cooked or in sauces or in salsa, but you put onions in so many things. Uh, so I've got a yellow sweet Spanish onion, which are the ones that I buy in the store anyway. So, this is perfect for me. I don't have to worry about going to the store. Um, and yeah, a one pound onion, perfect. Mm, and then I've got another heirloom. And this is a Oregon sugar pod. These are peas. Danny loves sugar snap peas. And so, we won't let these get to shelling. Um, we'll just pick them young and eat them off the vine and we'll talk about all that stuff when I do the planning. Now these two, this is going to be amusing to you because I did say that I don't like peppers, right? Well, I like salsa and I like queso and salsa. So I got a Tam jalapeno, which is a mild jalapeno. Uh, it's got the same flavor of jalapeno, but a lot less heat. So I'm looking forward to that. And my husband actually likes jalapenos every once in a while. And there's a story I'll have to tell you about that because that was pretty funny. And the other pepper I bought is a poblano. Um, These will be great in salsas as well. Uh, you can stuff them for chili rellenos. There's all kinds of things you can do to these. Um, and they're pretty, uh, pretty small. Well, three to six inch heart shaped fruits. Um, and you can also dry these and make chili powder out of them. So those are my seed orders for now. I have probably another maybe 30 packages of seeds um, that I started out storing in my refrigerator and I'm going to leave those there. Those I'm going to store in a uh, cool dry place so that I don't risk... Uh, the seeds getting damp and actually either molding or germinating in the packet long before I'm ready to plant. Um, so that's, those are the seeds. I'm super excited. I got some rare seeds there. 
um, something that I have never seen in the stores. I learn about a lot of these plants from watching other gardening channels. Um, and I can't wait to plant next year. I gotta finish building my beds though <laughs> and figure out how many of each I can plant in the space that I'm going to have. Um, so that's it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell so you get notifications every time I post a video and have a great, great day.